The project view contains a lot of information about your designs. The project tab holds your wireframe information. It has things at different levels. It holds the color sequence and you can navigate that and rearrange it as you need to. The stitches tab holds the expanded stitches information. So it can display for you the length of the stitches as well as the individual needle penetrations. Um, the navigator shows you your view window and then the design checker allows you to look through your design and if anything's a little questionable, it may flag it so that you can address it before it ever gets to your machine. The project tab does contain a lot of information about your design. It's got the project name, it's got the design itself, it's got the color information. If you expand down, it's got the wireframe information. So in the project tab of the project view, you have kind of a hierarchy of information and you can select at those different levels as well. So if I wanted to, I could select a wireframe element. If I go above that, I'm selecting the whole color. I can take this out of 3D so you can see things become bold or not bold. There we go, there's the white. Uh, here's the design level. So if I select it there, I have the whole design. If I had two designs in here, let me just insert another design real quick. So let me grab this cardinal to go with this blue J. I'm gonna move this one over. Remember that when you copy and paste, duplicate, or insert the X and Y location of all the needle penetrations line up. All right, let me collapse all this back down. So I just used collapse all. You can expand all, which will expand out to the wireframe elements, or you can collapse all, which will collapse down to just the color level. But you can see here, here's the project itself. Here's the first design. So that's sewing first. Here's the second design, that's sewing second, because the order that they appear in the project view is the order in which they will sew. And if I put this in 3D, and let me fit everybody on screen, if I play this out, you can see that, yeah, the Blue Jay is the first one to sew. I'm gonna speed that up a little bit. And then I'm going to change the order. So I'm going to drag this down. I'm changing the sew order. So now it is sewing the cardinal first. And if I click on slow redraw, yep, it's definitely sewing that cardinal first. So the order in which things appear is the order in which they will sew. So I'm going to delete that cardinal and we'll get back to just that blue jay. Okay. So the levels. I've got the project level at top, and if I select there, I will select everything. If I select the design level, I will select just that design. If I select add a color, I'm selecting only that color. If I go down past that, I can go to the wireframe level. So now I'm only selecting just this wireframe element. And if I want to go past that even yet, I can go down to the point list, and I can expand that out. And now I'm dealing with just the wireframe points, so I can select individual wireframe or input points. And to do that, I toggled that point list. And that's something that I do. Um, I don't see that being the case for a lot of people early on. I get a little bit crazy with my editing. The project view can also be used to help manage colors a little bit. We've got a couple of tools in there to help you do that. You've got merge color and auto merge color. And what that will do is it will merge the color block into the one above it for merge. And for auto merge, if there are any back to back identical color changes or color blocks, it will merge them all together into one. So you're having to deal far less with a, a large color sequence when you get over to the machine. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I select a bunch of these elements and I change them to a different color of blue, because I'm trying to mimic the way that it's shadowed or something like that. Now, if I collapse all this down, I've got three different blocks of blue. I'm going to turn auto merge off for a minute. And here we've got the merge color blocks. So if I click on this, it will merge this kind of dark medium blue into this 1828 work shirt. So Calypso is going to merge into work shirt. You know what? 
Let's make this a really ridiculous color so you can actually see it happen. So the darker blue is something that I might actually do. The pink, probably not, but at least you'll be able to see it. So now I'm going to click on merge and that's going to merge this color into the one above it. So all of those pieces just became whatever the color above it was. So it essentially removed a color change command from the machine. Now I have two back-to-back -back identical color blocks. I could press merge color block here to merge it up in there, or if I had a design that had a lot of these, I could automatically merge those color blocks. When I press this, as soon as I open the design, this is sticky, it stays on. As soon as I open a design with a lot of back-to-back -back identical color blocks, they will merge all together into one. If you're editing a design, if you're copying and pasting and moving things around and deleting trims and adding trims and selecting things in the view window, occasionally you can come up with a design that has several identical back-to-back -back color blocks. And that gets to be a bit of a nightmare when you're trying to put all of those color changes into the color sequence on the machine. I just don't want to deal with 20 identical work shirt blue colors. I I just want one. In that case, auto merge will smush all of those identical back-to-back -back color blocks into one. And yeah, smush is a technical term. We also have group and ungroup. So if I have elements that I want to keep together, I can select them and I can group them. And as soon as I group them, they'll all get a little number beside the wireframe elements. And that just means that's the first group I made today. But what that also means is if I select one of those elements, I select all of them within that group. So I can move it around without fear of accidentally moving one of his feathers and not the outline to go with them. Let me undo to move that back. There we go. Um, I can also ungroup it. And as soon as I do that, those little numbers disappear. So group and ungroup are really handy for me when I'm moving things around a design and I want to make sure that I keep that outline with them. I'll just grab everything and group it. I can move it all as one piece. These two buttons, the toggle stitches and toggle design checker, deal with these other two tabs. So let's look at the tab first and then come back to see how it applies with this button. The stitches tab deals with the individual needle penetrations. So it gives you the X and Y location of the needle penetration itself. It gives you the distance. So change in X, change in Y, and then the column that I look at most frequently is this L column, that is the length. The L column is the length of the stitch. So I use that column very frequently when troubleshooting is designed. I will look through that column. If I see a bunch of numbers that are falling below 10, really falling below eight, I know, okay, I'm, I'm trying to sew smaller than my needle. I, 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 my stitches are smaller than the diameter of my needle that's not going to end well for me. So I know, okay, that's my problem area. That's, that's potentially a problem. Then I go deal with it. Either I lengthen my stitches or I use pull offset to, to widen my satins or my fills to make sure that I don't have those really tiny stitch lengths. So I will look at the L as a, a I just, if I see them really small, that's probably a, a problem area for It'll also show you the kind of stitch that it is. So the TIs you'll see are tie-ins. You can look through and these are just regular stitches. And then at the end, you'll also see a TO. Let's find a trim real quick. You can also see the elements pass by. So I just saw some columns go by. There's another one. So let's go back. Let me select, let me select right here and go back to stitches. And so here you can see TO as a tie, uh, tie off and then TI as a tie in. So it ties off, trims, ties in. Very, very good. This is what I like to see. So the stitches shows you X and Y location, 
change in X, change in Y. These I don't do a lot with. Honestly, the one that I pay attention to is the L. Next, I want to look at the design checker. And the design checker shows what might be a problematic area. And so here it's showing, hey, these column stitches are under 10 points wide. You might want to look at that. And if I zoom in here, I look at the stitches tab. Wow, that's a lot of stitches that are falling underneath that 8 to 10. Yeah, I really want to be careful with that. So I can either address that with the wireframe so I can move these points and make everything wider. And then as I do that, you'll notice these numbers all just got bigger. And that element went away from here. Let's look at the next one. So I have it selected here. I want to I want to find it here. So the easiest way for me to do that is fit to selection. And yep, I've got some really tiny stuff here as well. So I might move these wireframe points to open this up. And as soon as I did, that was enough to make that go away. So I can make sure I'm going through and editing my design wherever those problems are. I can look at them here and I can either address them via properties or I can maybe address them with the wireframe shape itself. So let's go back to the project tab. I will collapse all. So the project tab has the toggle stitch tab. And as I do that, it brings in the stitches within the project tab itself. And if you have the real estate, you can move these around so that you can see your wireframe elements. You can also see your stitches. If you had a lot of real estate, you could even bring in the design checker. So toggle design checker will do the same thing. It just takes up that much more. So if I had another monitor, I might have my project view open on that other monitor, viewing all three of these at the same time. But to try to do this on my one monitor, I'm going to end up with tiny, tiny amounts of view window in which to digitize and edit. So I may choose to turn one on at a time or neither and just go to that tab when I need it if I don't have the room or if I don't have another monitor on which to put these. Lastly, we have the navigator tab. The navigator tab shows this view window in a little red box. And it's a pretty tiny red box. But if I move this red box around, whatever it's showing is whatever is in this view window. And if I want, I can hold control and click and drag a box in the navigator and it will zoom this window to match whatever box I drew. One last thing to look at in the project tab. You have the ability to show and hide elements, designs, colors with this eyeball. So as I click these, it will hide them. It doesn't make them go away. If I send this to the machine, they will still sew out. So it's not getting rid of them. It's just hiding them. Nice thing about hidden things is I can't select them. I can also see through them. The next one over is lock. So if I lock an element, or in this case, I just locked the whole design, I can't select it by clicking on it in the view window. Now, I still can access things by selecting it in the project view, but I can't get to it via the view window. I tend to treat that lock icon as a protect me from myself feature. So if I get something edited just the way that I want it, I can lock it and then I won't screw it up later when I'm editing other elements around it. But now you've got a good idea of what the project view has for you. It's got the project tab, it's got the stitches tab, the navigator tab. If you can't find where you're zoomed in on something, just look for that little red box. And then the design checker, which has its own video and uh, more information in the manual. But you've got a lot of tools in the project view itself to help you get through your design and get good results in your sewing.